And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Thursday, December 11th, 2025. And as often the case, there's never a dull moment in the weather across the state of Alaska. We have another active weather pattern shaping up now through early next week. A frontal system is pushing in off the Bering Sea. It has warmer air, but warmer air is not good news when you have cold temperatures like we've had here this past week. As the warm air comes over the cold air, it creates snow and we have strong winds, so there will be blowing snow that will result in blizzard or near blizzard conditions in areas of the west coast, spreading into the interior and north slope and along uh, the Arctic coast. That system will spread further uh, east-southeastward into the interior to around Fairbanks and the north side of the Alaska Range Friday before things begin to wind down Saturday morning. And then after that, another storm is going to impact the panhandle. We have more heavy snow and possibly an icy mix of precipitation in the far southern part of the panhandle as we go into Saturday and Sunday. An additional potential for snow as more moisture comes into that system early next week. And once we get past that, the cold air is going to redevelop in response to Arctic high pressure rebuilding over northwest Canada next week. And this could cause the cold temperatures like we've had earlier this week across the eastern mainland, northern panhandle, northwest Canada to reestablish itself and persist through the holidays. That's right, Christmas even into the early New Year. So this morning, as you can often do with temperatures at 50 below zero, Katie Turk and Toke, that's a lot of a, a, alliteration there, took a pan of boiling water and gave it a toss up in the air and you get that famous little experiment that shows the water sublimating right away into ice crystals. And you can do that when you have temperatures at 50 below zero. And she has had reported temperatures in Toke at her, her uh, homestead there between 50 and 55 below zero the past four mornings. Well, looking at the west coast right now, up there along the Chuck GC, blizzard conditions at Point Lay, a temperature of 18 degrees. South winds gusting there 40, 50 miles an hour with heavy snow falling. Meanwhile, opposite end of the state, the far southern panhandle, Heidelberg, Prince of Wales Island, mostly clear 27. You're going to get in on some more heavy snow Saturday that could mix with or even change over to some freezing rain or rain Sunday and other parts of the panhandle further north, central panhandle, even into the northern panhandle may pick up on some heavier snow with a couple few rounds of moisture that will be working its way on up across the panhandle, especially later this weekend and early next week. Hazardous weather here are the current warnings, advisories. Winter storm warning, Seward Peninsula around uh, Norton Sound, the east side there, and uh, around Kotzebue Sound, the southward facing slopes of the Brooks Range are going to have strong south winds with this front coming in. Heaviest snow, higher terrain around the Seward Peninsula, and here just inland north and east of Kotzebue, some snowfall amounts as much as six to nine inches. Other places, just a couple few inches, especially up here through the north slope. It tends to be a little drier. However, when you throw in 50, 60 mile an hour winds, that's gonna create blizzard conditions. So we have blizzard conditions here along the Chukchi Sea coastline and the Beaufort Sea coast, as well as the western north slope. Uh, this area here into Friday, the area uh, east of Prudhoe Bay around Kaktovik will see very strong west winds persist into Sunday morning. So an extended period of blizzard conditions expected along the central eastern uh, Beaufort Sea coast uh, as a result of that the strong winds and snow. And then that front, as the moisture presses southeastward, we're going to see light to moderate snow break out across the interior around Fairbanks with snowfall amounts three to six inches in many spots. Some locally higher amounts in the White Mountains are up against the north slope there of the Alaska Range. Nevertheless, though, uh, the worst conditions will be Friday into Friday night before things begin to wind down Saturday morning. Then in the Panhandle, we still have cold weather advisories for the northern panhandle with the extreme cold warning for White Pass. Back over here, we have cold weather uh, advisories for the northern Copper River Basin. Cold air is going to stay in place through Friday morning, even though temperatures are going to moderate across the mainland with that Bering Sea front pushing inland. But here we have a winter storm watch for Saturday into Sunday for the central northern panhandle 
and some of the same areas that just recently saw heavy snow could get another round coming in this weekend. And there's going to be a couple few different rounds of moisture come up into the panhandle that could eventually overspread much of the panhandle, especially Sunday into Monday. But some of the heavier initial snows falling here in the southern middle panhandle, Petersburg, Wrangell, places like that that had the heavy snowfall the other day could get another round coming in here starting Saturday. Now looking at the satellite imagery, this is kind of the hint of that moisture that's well to the south. That's going to be a low that comes up toward the panhandle this weekend. Meanwhile, you have a front arcing here in through the bearing, and this is the moisture, the higher cloud tops, thicker cloud tops coming into the west coast and into northern parts of the state up there along the north slope, Utkiavik. Later tonight, frontal system pushing eastward and inland rather quickly and strong south winds turning westerly, so there will be blizzard conditions along the Arctic coast, north slope. The heavier snow uh, in through the Seward Peninsula and the south slope of the Brooks Range will begin to let up uh, as we get into uh, mid to late Friday morning. And the system presses southeastward so that on Friday we'll have pockets of light to moderate snow across the interior. It could be locally higher around the Alaska Range and White Mountains there of the interior. But as we look south, here comes the low that's going to be impacting the panhandle this weekend. And we have strong high pressure over the northern bearing. It's all part of a bigger high in the mid-levels of the atmosphere that extends southwestward down into the Pacific. So that by Saturday, the low is still down in the North Pacific, but this front drapes up into the panhandle. and It's going to be a conduit for more moisture. So that's why the panhandle will be getting in on additional potential for some heavier snow Saturday that could mix with or even change over to some freezing rain or rain in the far southern panhandle as we get into Sunday. Meanwhile, notice these, this collection of high pressures beginning to reestablish itself. Even though we've seen temperatures briefly moderate along the west and northern uh, coastlines, temperatures are going to be turning colder again early next week. And by Sunday, there's that low. <clears throat> Notice a similar theme. You have the low in Alaska, broad circulation. You have high pressure reestablishing itself from the lower bearing up through the Bering Strait, northern parts of the state. Eventually, this high will reestablish itself over the lower Yukon in northwest Canada. But one thing is, we're going to start to get some strong winds again forming in south central. Wasilla uh, Palmer could see some wind gusts 40 to 60 miles an hour redevelop this afternoon. It will not be as strong yet as we can see of an event as what we had last weekend, but certainly stay tuned. There could be some sort of wind advisories or wind warnings coming out for the Matsu, lower Matsu uh, Valley area as a result of this setup here with some of the stronger winds expected uh, Sunday morning. So on the weather map for Friday morning, not quite as cold, only 41 below or so there around Northway, Toke, uh, near 40 below Fort Yukon. But notice temperatures coming up along the west coast, 20s, lower uh, Yukon coast, 24 at Savunga, teens, Seward Peninsula. As we get into Friday, temperatures will be up near 30 degrees up toward, uh, say, Kuskokwim Bay around Kipnik. And then going up along the coast, temperatures rise across the interior into the 20s, creeping up the lower Yukon Valley. We have temperatures cold, though, over the Panhandle. 10 above at Skagway, teens at Juneau, and 19 to 20 there around Wrangell, Petersburg. Temperatures out through the lower Bering, or through the um, lower Aleutians in the lower 40s. And then for Saturday morning, notice the lows here in, along the Alcan border, not nearly as cold as what they were because that front did bring in some modified Bering Sea air. So temperatures will be in the teens, maybe some 20s belows, but not 40, 50 below like we saw uh, through a good part of the early midweek. And then for Saturday afternoon, that front just kind of washes out. And the high by Sunday will begin to start to rebuild over the northern eastern part of the state. And meanwhile, Saturday we'll start to see the potential for some snow moving up into the panhandle. Some of it could be heavy central southern areas, so stay tuned to later forecasts because I'm sure that winter storm watch will be upgraded to warnings or advisories. And I wanted to show you the sea surface temperature of the Pacific back. This is from September 30th when this is a about 10 days before Halong, the remnants of 
of the typhoon came up and devastated the YK deltas. This cooling of the waters, this shows a, a negative anomaly along the equatorial Pacific between South America and Australia. This is a La Nina, and it was actually a little stronger than in the, the early fall. But this is what I want you to know. In the mid-latitudes, around 45 degrees, we have a high anomaly of above normal sea surface temperature south of the Aleutians. That's what helped energize the remnants of Halong. Now that we're getting, uh, now we're going to advance now to December 10th, just the other day. We still have the La Nina, the cooler than normal uh, Pacific waters along the equatorial Pacific. Uh, it's, a, it's considered a weak La Nina. This is not a strong La Nina. But we still have water temperatures in the middle latitudes of the North Pacific above normal. So this can help energize storms or at least provide a little more heat energy and moisture. And as we look coming up here, it's, a, it's, it's established a very stable blocking pattern in the upper levels, levels of the atmosphere. When the wave patterns get blocked, things don't move much. And so what we're going to see reestablish is the Arctic high pressure over northwest Canada coming up here this next week and into the holidays. What that means is that the cold air will rebuild and then just sit especially over the southeastern half of the mainland into northern parts of the Panhandle, northern Canada. And in fact, it's looking too like eventually some of that cold air will seep south, southeastward into western Canada, trailing further south. But the pattern is being set up such that we are going to see a high likelihood of below normal temperatures over much of the state centered on the southeast. And that's December 17th through 21st, the winter solstice which means a return of temperatures, 40, 50 below temperatures could return again in those normal cold spots, upper Tanana Valley, places of the Yukon. So just be aware of that. And we're not looking at a ton of moisture either. It's uh, typically very cold and dry over the southern mainland and now even setting up into the panhandle. So we are looking at a potentially colder period coming up here as we head toward winter solstice and that could continue into the holidays there are indications that this pattern will be blocked and just allow the cold air to further develop and sit over Alaska and Northwest Canada. So you've been forewarned. Uh, a smart thing to do too if you, you want just take some time to make sure all your vehicles, snow machine, things like that, batteries, all that kind of stuff, uh, just to, to make sure th your equipment runs properly. Also do a little safety check of your home or homestead. Make sure that your heating systems are functioning properly, make sure you have a backup plan or two, and all these kind of little safety things, extra food, make sure you have extra medical supplies so you don't have to worry about making a trip out in some really bad weather. So uh, all that aside, that will set you up well to have a happy and safe holiday season.